On episode 32 of Mega Real Estate Talk, we're going to teach you how to win every listing appointment you go on. Let's go. You're listening to Mega Real Estate Talk with Jared Davis and Galen Parker, your source for an honest, insightful look into Central Virginia's real estate market. Combined, Jared and Galen have over 20 years sales experience, as well as hundreds of testimonials from clients past and present who rely on them for advice and assistance when buying and selling homes in today's incredibly hot and competitive real estate market. And now, your hosts, Jared Davis and Galen Parker. I am Jared Davis. And I'm still Galen Parker. And this is Mega Real Estate Talk. Now, you may be asking yourself, what? As someone that's listening to the last 20 podcasts, or maybe you just got in a, a bit ago, we were RVA Real Estate Talk. We felt like we needed a little bit of a rebrand because RVA is our home city, Richmond, Virginia. Obviously, we started this in Richmond, but since we got so many listeners that are listening from other countries, from other places in the U.S., uh, we thought, you know, this isn't really a Richmond-based podcast. This is a realtor, investor-based podcast. Absolutely. So, uh, we didn't want people to be confused searching for us and saying, well, they're just RVA. This is not. So this is mega real estate talk. And I feel mega. I'm always mega. I feel so mega right now, and I love it. I love the change, different uh, viewpoint, outlook. We're going global. If I could get away with saying global real estate podcast talk, I'd go for it. Oh, man. If you're listening in a different country and you want to help building your team, please reach out to us. Gosh, we're we we partnering with people all over the country and world right now. We've got some people in Germany coming on board in our line. It's pretty awesome stuff. It's exciting so. time, right? It's like exciting time. If you're interested, let us know. Yeah, now to start, uh, we're going to need coffee first, so I know we're we're in the middle of this podcast, but uh, our our wonderful studio manager and producer has offered to send his nanny to get coffee. You heard that right. You heard that first word Are we utterance. ringing? Oh, you're ringing on the podcast. Oh. Bethany? Yeah. Can you get some coffee for us? Ooh. I would love to. What do y'all need? I would like a grande shaken oat milk espresso. Yep. It's a really long name, but it's delicious. If you haven't tried it, listeners, you should you should do that. Galen, what are you drinking? I'm going to get the exact same thing. And what I love about this right now is that we are – this is live on the podcast. Uh, is it Bethany? Yeah. Poor Bethany is just like, what did I just walk into? What did I just sign up for? She's known me long enough to expect this stuff. I love how like easy yeah. Mike slid into it. He's like, hey, Bethany, <laughs> this is Michael down here in the basement. Uh, can I get some coffee for Jared and Galen? and myself. Uh, right. Make sure it's not too hot, though. Kids hot, please. Thanks. <laughs> I was like, great job, Mike. I love it. They, they yeah. love me. Do you need a credit card? No, I got you. Oh, thank you. Oh, my God. This is great. Oh, two grande oat milk espressos. <laughs> yeah, shaken, iced, whatever, however they do it. It's a long name, but they'll know what it is. It's on the menu. Okay. You're the best. You are the best. I need a nanny. So Maybe I, she should be the, the manager of the podcast. Yeah, in a minute. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. We need nannies. So now I'm going to go home to my wife today and I'm going to tell her, we need a nanny. And she's going to tell me, we don't have any children. And I'm saying, it doesn't matter. We don't need her for, I'm, uh, for children watching. As soon as this is over, I'm getting on Fiverr. <laughs> oh, man. I'm like, nanny services <laughs> on, for adult male. Are there any fiber uh, people that are not in India or hey, somewhere Hey, hey fiber. You might have a problem with that. <laughs> the results are going to be crazy. Are, uh, there, are there local people on fiber? Absolutely. So yeah. one of the things that my, I even got my, into my, fiber. Are you on fiber? No, there's voice. People do voiceovers. Yeah, yeah. so that's how I first learned about fiber. You is should I do was voiceovers on fiver. <laughs> Uh, I was looking about how to become a voiceover artist and like everywhere I read was like start by putting some like you know content on Fiverr so that people could hear it and I was like I just haven't got around to the fact that I'm like well we got like a million episodes of this podcast that we could put on so oh my gosh are you about to be you're about to be voiceover famous oh man I'm trying to I'm trying to grow man I, I guess we need nannies I, I feel like there's not someone in my day to day life that will just go get me coffee and it's called a personal assistant I, have, I like calling them nannies better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get that. I like but, nannies. But. Yeah. Maybe that'll be like a team a competition, start. like the lowest agent on the team. Now they've got to do something now like that. Nanny. Like, I'm like, well, I looked at your call oh, output. That was low, and you didn't have any new buyers. So here's what you, for the next 30 days, Go you're a nanny. 
I like that. Then people are going to meet people, and you're like, I'll get our nanny to pick it up. And they're like, how many kids do you have? Like, and like, none. None. <laughs> none. Zero. No, we just liked what they were doing with other families I with, just with thought, kids. We um, keep on trying, but nothing <laughs> happens. We liked what they were doing with families with kids, and we thought, why do we need kids? <laughs> this is less work. <laughs> yes. Ergo, less money. And, and uh, I don't have to pay them. I don't have to pay for kid child. I don't have to pay 100%. for all the child care stuff. So, yeah, that's great. And I think if there's one thing that you guys have noticed about Jared and myself is that we can spot talent. And yeah. so it was like, look, I see what you're doing over there with that baby. Can you also bring me lunch? How would you uh, like a job doing exactly what you're doing with no babies? Mm. How about that? That's <laughs> less stress. <laughs> right. It's like you'll never have to worry about keeping I'll a child alive. I'll pay you the same. Alive. I'll pay you the same. This you're is very no longer, stockish. You're like, no longer responsible. This is brilliant. Let's hire Bethany when she gets back. Oh, man, we're going to throw <laughs> so much money at Beth. Like, so, Bethany, what's the wage that Michael pays <laughs> you alive on the air? <laughs> All right, we'll dabble in. Very nice. All right, let's. Let's, let's do this thing. Are we going deep dive? Let's go deep dive. All right. First official mega real estate talk deep dive. Mike, give us the music. That's pretty mega. All right. I like it. Where's the drop, Mike? I know there's got to be a drop. No drop. Wow. What? Okay. That, that was, was the most anti-climactic, <laughs> anti-mega so music. Weird. Have you not noticed a trend? It's gotten shorter, I which mean, I like. It is just. But my goal is to get it shorter and shorter every single <laughs> so time. Like, so it's a <laughs> one like, hey, second. Let's go to the. It's like. <laughs> That's it. All right. All there right. All right. What's the topic today? So today we're trying to spot the opportunity that it lays amongst many of you realtors, and that's how can you win more listings? Yeah. Exactly. You figure, you know, if. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, I had more to say, but that was like, no, 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 no. I was just thinking about it. Continue. Uh, everyone, uh, when you get into real estate, they're going to say the same thing. Like, how many houses are you listing? Because they think it's easy. Um, I remember when I first got into, friends were like, so how many listings you got? I'm like, zero. I have zero. I've got like a thousand buyers and zero <laughs> listings. But eventually, a strong, healthy business is where you were able to combine the two. I'm not saying be only listings. Well, a lot of agents do want to be only listings. At Until the market though. changes, and then they're like, oh. So, That's true, too. You've yeah. got to be healthy. I, I think it's good to be healthy. Now, maybe you weight it. Maybe you go 70-30. Um, you know. or, or, I mean, you figure you build the team out, and then you've got your... Yeah. You know, maybe you you list and you don't care about as many of the buyer side. You got a lot of buyer agents. You have a lot of buyers. So it's going to be different for anybody that's listening to this. But this this episode, since it's, I mean, it's it's easier to get buyers, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, and for Um, every listing you get, hypothetically, you should get a buyer out of it if you're smart. One or two, yeah. And so we're going to just talk about some of the things that you need to do to win that listing, and then when you have that listing. When you have that beautiful thing, what do you do with it so that you can convert it to have future business for yourself? Ooh, that's a little add-on that I didn't mm. know we were doing. But a little treat. I like it. I'll put a cherry on that thing. <laughs> All right, let's go. So first thing, preparation. Oh, my goodness. I mean, this this is uh, uh, easy. I mean, you would think, obviously, I should prepare. But <laughs> what goes into preparation when you really think about it? Because if you're a new agent and you're going up against, say, someone like us, that's a mega team. Okay. You know, we're doing hundreds mega. and hundreds of deals a year. Like, we run listing appointments in our sleep, right? I mean, how do you differentiate yourself with your preparation to make sure that they look at you and think, this guy, he knows what he's talking about? One of the things I thought about is for you to differentiate yourself versus someone like us is that, one, you're going to have to do what we're doing already. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to know in your preparation, know your numbers, know your market, and then just know have the ancillary information regarding houses and, and renovation. We talk about numbers. Jared, what, what type of numbers do some, will someone need to know? Well, the base, obviously, is... This is what, our numbers guy. What's this person going to sell their house for? That's what most people figure I need to know. I need to comp this house out. They're going to run their numbers before they get out. And they're going to do a, a comparative market analysis, a CMA. They're typically going to bring that CMA. But where I find a lot of new agents fail, and even seasoned agents, if they're just losing to us a lot, is that... They aren't convincing with their numbers, right? Anybody oh, can come in and say, I was say the same thing. "Hey, your listing's worth three fifty. But then when that person says, "But Zillow says my house is worth three eighty five, so why is it three fifty? Mm-hmm. That's where I find that when you're not fully prepared and you don't know how to really explain comps and explain how these things break down, that's when I think it it becomes key that you have preparation in mind because we run into it all the time. In fact, I went on one yesterday. Was it? Yes. It, I think it was. Uh, you went on one Monday, so that was yesterday. Sunday. Okay. I went on one Sunday that 
They told me they thought the house was worth three hundred. The true comps about two seventy. When I checked on Zillow, no, it was the one yesterday. Mm. Sorry, that one was three eighty. They said four hundred. Zillow said five forty. Oh, okay, nice. It was the, the most off I've seen Zillow. I mean, I, I mean, we know. That, <laughs> Well, we know that Zillow can be up to 10% off even in their best markets, but mm-hmm. that was like 25% off. I mean, it was a huge margin off. Was um, there something that sold around it that nothing. spiked it up? Nothing. I have no idea. It was a townhouse. Um, all, the oh, other, okay. all the other townhouses around it sold for right around 380 330 350 I have no idea what metric it was pulling. Mm-hmm. I went and pulled, I think, uh, like Redfin after that just to see. Because I like to – that's part of preparation, right? Yeah. What am I walking into? What are they going to throw on me with Zillow and Trulia when I get there, right? <laughs> I always like to know what uh, Zillow said because I want to like be prepared for that because everyone's going to be like, well, the Z estimate said. And I'm like, okay, yeah, naturally. Yeah. Sometimes Z- I, I incorporate that in mine. I'm like, well, as you guys have probably ever seen, the Z estimate says, and they're just like, oh, yeah, that's what I said. And I'm like, and so here's the issue. So Yeah, so then you got to figure, right? Like, okay, if Zillow says this, has Zillow been into your house before? Anybody from Zillow? Right? I mean, these are questions that I will actually ask the seller, right? I'm in your house now. If an appraiser came out, he would want to walk through your house. I'm walking through your house. Notice I haven't given you a value until I've actually gone through and seen all of your finishings. Because if I came in your house and it was a wreck and it needed a full renovation, then it would obviously sell for less than it would if it was fully renovated. <laughs> but Zillow doesn't know if it needs a full renovation. Zillow's like 540. That, that's it. So, Across the board. 100%. So as I walk through that house, right, that's where I start bringing things out. Like, oh, all right, upgrade kitchen upgraded baths and then when we sit down with them a lot of people like to print cmas out and there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that um I, I think it's good it makes you look prepared a lot of times but i've i've noticed at least in my personal experience that the cma report itself most people will not look at at the listing appointment and they'll almost never look at it after now that's not telling you not to do it other people mm-hmm. have printed listing presentations that they bring with the presentation there's nothing wrong with that either um, but what i do notice that has been helpful for me is i just bring my ipad and i bring the comps up digitally with internet and then i can show them the actual pictures So part of that preparation is I've already gone through these listings in their neighborhood and seen, hey, this one's really renovated. So I know as soon as I walk in, this person's going to say, well, the neighbor's house just sold for 580. So why isn't mine 580? And then I have to be able to show them, well, look at their kitchen and look at your kitchen. Look at their bath and look at your bath. Look at their, oh, square footage. You know, theirs is 1,500 square feet bigger. Well, no, I thought it was the same size. Well, let's do some math. Yeah. You know, at 180 a square foot. I always like to show, like, the comparative pictures, and I never, like, say, I'm always just like, so if, is your is your kitchen, like, better than theirs? Or what would, what would you think? And they're like, oh, well, they've got uh, granite, and uh, there's no blood everywhere. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get that all the time. The my, uh, agent tells me, oh, I got to have this house looking, like, exactly like this one that was the other day. <laughs> and I'm like... But their kitchen's ten times better. How am I supposed to make that look like that? Just edit it. (laughs) Most people, I feel like, are pretty honest with themselves. That's that's very true. You will get the people that you know. Sometimes you'll get the person that's like, "Oh, we renovated," and you're like, "When do you renovate?" And they're like, eight years ago." And you're like, "That that is not a renovation, right?" I mean, that's eight years old. And then you'll go in, and it's obviously eight years dated too. You'll have like cherry cabinets with some faux marble, and you're like, "This is not." A renovated bathroom, right? You kept good care of it, but this is not in style anymore. I was uh, I was thinking last week there was an agent, and you're going to be going on a listing appointment with her, I think, tomorrow. Mm-hmm. But she asked me, like, what should I know for the listing agent? And I always tell people who go on listing appointments with me, say nothing first and foremost. Please don't ever talk. But the other <laughs> thing is, is I, like, told the same thing. <laughs> I was like, yes, it's important that you know the printout, but if you can't speak to the information it's it's nothing i can bring you a hundred print out and be like here they all at. but if i can't like say like all right so let's sit down and, I, and that goes with preparation for anyway because this weekend i went on like a showing not a not a listing it was just a showing a lead i didn't really know them well it was like a referral and so they just said well what do you think this how what we should offer and so i had my little form that goes with them and i showed like the percentage of list price versus sold price and i'm like listen i was like everything is selling for you know you know, 107% over list price. So, and like they were just like, 7% <gasps> over list seven price. 7%. So, yeah, not 100%. That's Holy crazy. crap. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Uh, no. So, like their, their eyes were just like, oh, okay. And I'm like, yeah. So, you see this. I'm like, so being prepared, even if you're new, yep. if you're competing against guys like us, that will kind of edge. 
I mean, it's not going to edge you against us, but it's going to help you in your confidence. But even in the preparation on numbers, right, you're going to have times when other agents will come in. And when this person is saying, well, we think our house is worth 720 and it's worth 680, right? Well, you're going to have other realtors that are like, oh, we'll go 720 because they want to win that listing yeah, appointment. Yeah, 100%. So how prepared are you that when another agent is saying, we'll get you 40000 more than that other agent said – that they still list with you. So there's a lot of listing appointments where I've ended where they've said, look, you are by far the best realtor we've met with. You have the best marketing plan. You have the best you know, numbers. You're confident. You guys have the best track record. You do the most sales. We want you to list it, but we want you to list it at the commission they offered and the price that they said we could get. Mm. And I just say, no, thanks. Yeah. Have a good day. Right? I gave you, I gave you my preparation. I spent all this time preparing. This is our plan, right? You have to follow. And we have plenty of people that list with us for less than other realtors will tell them. And we'll end up getting more, right? But it's because of that preparation. So it's go ahead. No, I was thinking so two two thoughts again. I went on a listing appointment a month ago and the exact same thing happened. It, the house is not worth and I, I wanted to kind of continue the relation with them because I knew they were going to buy with a major upgrade. And they, they were like, well, we, we spoke with such and such agency. They were here yesterday and they told and his price was like 15 grand higher than mine. Hmm. And I was just like, oh, OK. And I said, well, I said, tell you what, let's look at this. And I connected my laptop to my phone and I said, let's pull out everything that's sold in this area in the past year. And I said, so the price that he have that he showed you, I was like, that shows here. I said, but you notice the difference between your house and that and the guy's looking at it and he's like, well that house is four hundred square feet bigger than ours. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I said it? so I was like, so you see what the issue might be? And he was just like Huh? And his wife was like, oh, and she like got it like that. She was just like, oh, OK. And I, I said, so here's the thing. I said the date Now we went to the dangers of overlisting, you know, you know, putting at a higher price. But ultimately, me just explaining that to her, that's where she was like, when we left, she was like, Galen, you're my agent. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, and then she's talking about she wants to get a real estate license. I'm like, I'm still come, your agent. because I'm mega. So it really just helps you to kind of be prepared. The other thing I was thinking is that there was a. Um, I'm not going to say his name, not that there's anything bad, but our old, I guess he was like our office, not our, like a, he was a broker, like assistant broker. Supervising. Supervising broker. Sure. He had a tactic that I thought was pretty interesting, like when he would go and say like, hey, your house is worth 200 and they're like, we demand to listen for 230 and he's like, all right, let's listen for 230 for two weeks if we get offers, then great. If we don't get offers after two weeks, he was like, well, then we'll do my, my thing, and I was just like, huh. That's an issue. I'm like, it's kind of risky because, you know, that could kind of bring into other things of play of, of like that. But I'm like, sometimes, but I, I do like our tactic, not really our tactic, but our just stance of just like, listen, I am a professional giving you a professional advice. If you do not want my advice or opinion, then maybe we don't need to, if we're starting off at a disagreement, then yeah. maybe we don't want to further this by like, all right, let's deadlock ourselves into this contract and house never gets, then it's my fault, right? But this is where you have to be convincing, right? Yeah. So when you're preparing, I, I have, I always bring a calculator out almost every time because people are so visual. Mm -hmm. So as I'm running through those comps and I'm telling them, hey, well, look right here, this is what this one went with. Here's a colonial and they try to point out a rancher. You know, that's when, again, the knowledge of, hey, you know, a rancher that's the same size is going to be far more expensive because you've doubled the foundation. You've doubled the roof, right? You have all of these things. Oh, no, I didn't even know that. I didn't think about that. What about this one over here? Oh, that one has a ba – yours has a basement. That one has no basement. So they have all above-grade square footage. Yours yeah. is below grade. Right? So these are facts that as a listing agent <laughs> – like, you may not know. If you're a new agent, you're like, wait, basement footage is, is what worth what? How much less, right? Yeah. Wait, a ranch is worth more than a colonial, right? All of these things are facts that you need to know to be able to prepare to talk to clients. And then it's really great to be able to go through and start breaking down, hey, well, what do you think their two-car garage is worth since yours doesn't have the garage, right? So yeah. let's 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 just pull that off right now, all right? So we'll, 20 grand, all right, great. We're going to ink that 20 off. Now let's divide that square footage. All right, here's their price per square foot. How much is yours? Yours is 100 square foot but smaller too. Okay. Like, All right, pop, 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 pop. Let's see what this is. And then you just show them. And, and then typically if they're a sane person, <laughs> right, they can see why you're coming to your conclusions. But to walk in and just say, this is the number, this is what it is. Here's the comps and expect them to get it and not be emotionally tied to this house and want what Zillow says or want what realtor says. You're doing the same thing, right? Yeah. Zillow's like, here it is. I have no facts, but this is what it is. And then you're like, here it is. I have no facts, but I think it's worth less. Right? So you got to be able to come prepared. Know your numbers. Trying to force them to interpretate the data. That is that is the first thing. The second thing I have is building a relationship. Okay. I think that's key because I think so many people go into a listing appointment trying to be a salesperson. 
and they they're trying to be so professional and so clear cut. I think some people even stick so hard to a listing presentation that it's just I don't know. By the end of it, it's like, are we friends? What are we? Like that guy seemed like he was smart. He kind of knew what he was doing, but. Yeah. Do they want to hang out There's with no me? There's no connection. Yeah, and so to me, when I finish the listing appointment, I want to know that this person now probably wants to have dinner with me at some point for fun. Like, if we have the same hobbies, like if we talked about Top Golf, like hopefully we're going to Top Golf together. If they ride motorcycles, maybe we're going on a motorcycle ride. It, I mean, whatever it may be, right? You want to play video games? Let's play video games. My team lead and me, we play video games together all the time. Whatever. I find so many people never reach that point with clients. And the problem... It's a shame, yeah. Yeah, you're, hey, your wife's calling me. Look at that. Uh, worth taking on the podcast? Probably not. Take it. Take it? Take it. Don't take it. Gail, <laughs> <says no. laughs> we'll, uh, we'll get that after. We'll, we'll make the call. So, uh, and again, the thing with building that relationship also comes in the fact that if this seller is also going to buy, it's the same thing. They're going to see you all the time if you have to show them houses. And if they don't enjoy hanging out with you, then you're probably not going to be the choice, right? When they meet that person that's like just outgoing and enthusiastic and, you know, addicting to be around, they're going to want to. I'm addicted to you. Right? I'm, hey. <laughs> I mean, I think it's the right choice of words, right? It's like, man, that guy's just, I love being around him. See, I wrote on my form just about creating the ultimate customer experience, and I think that goes into it because, you know, it's more than just a transaction. This is a life journey. This is a huge monumental thing that's taking place. You know, they've invested time, energy, memories into this house, and now they're probably going to move on to a another location. And so if they can feel comfortable with you to say more than just like, all right, this guy's in, but like, this guy cares. Like he's going to, if they sense that, they, that you care, then they're not going to second guess like all the decisions down the road because they just know at the core, Jared cares that I, you know, make as much money as possible and have an easy experience. And so he's going to do everything else. So they're not going to be like, oh, what are you going to do for this? What are you going to do for that? They're just like, you know what? It's okay. They got it. They understand. They yeah. get it. You know, him and I, we sat down, we had a beer. He understands how important this is for me. And I think that is going to be such a huge thing for you to be able to connect yeah. uh, with that person to, to, to kind of bolster their own confidence in the situation. I love that you said sit down and have a beer because I, I mean I'm not telling all you listeners to go drink on all your listing appointments but I have definitely asked agents that I thought were really rigid like hey have you ever drank with your people on a listing appointment and they're like no what? Uh-uh. That, that doesn't sound like alcohol yeah and I'm like uh, I mean I didn't say show up drunk to the listing appointment I said, didn't even you, say get drunk yeah I said have you, have you have you had a glass of wine have you had a beer because there's so many times I go on a listing appointment where it's five six o'clock right the clients are getting off of work they're like oh my god it's been a long day I'm so ready to pop a bottle of wine I'm like pop a bottle of wine yeah don't let me stop you right if that's what you're gonna do when i leave why don't you do it now right let's relax let's this does not have to be a stressful let's time let's talk this through we're trying to de-stress the sales process i had one guy trick me out one time and asked me if i wanted a beer and i was like sure why not and then he like, gave me the beer and i was like are you gonna have one he's like no i'm good <laughs> he's like i would never drink during an important <laughs> yeah. life <laughs> I'm like, I, oh, I'm no still, alcoholic <laughs> <laughs> i still got the listing no i still actually sold the house but i just he's thought like, it was sober i just like to watch people drink beer I, like, in my I feel awkward no i'm just <laughs> drinking while i'm helping you it's like <laughs> oh man that's really funny yeah so i mean build the relationship build the friendship there's something that i tell my team all the time and that's people don't want to be sold but they love to go shopping with friends. So that's so effective on the buy side, right? And we're calling all of these leads and we're trying to get them to use us. It's like they don't want to be sold anything. Yeah. But if you can become their friend, they will love to go shopping for houses with you. But selling's the same way, right? When you go to sell their house, you want them to be like, man, Galen, Jared, they are so good to be around. I, lo I love when I have to sell a house because I get to hang out with them for a couple months, right? That is really what we're trying to do. And then some because we never go away. We're always with you. No, we have our client parties, and that's, that's a whole other podcast, obviously. Anything else in there before we move on to the next one? No, I like that. That was great. Okay. Next thing. Have a marketing plan. Okay. Most people are under the method of post and pray. That's what I always say. <laughs> what is post and pray? Because I, I say that all the time. But sometimes I've, I've seen like glossy to the looks when people say, like, what does that mean? They post it in MLS, and then they pray it sells. That, that's it. 
right? And so how devalued as as careered people are we as an industry mm -hmm. is it to even have these agents in the industry, right? Like that industry, like it is such a disservice to us for people to just be like, well, I'm going to take it and we're going to get some pictures and put it in MLS and the market's great. So I'll, and, I'll let you know when some people start sending offers. And that's why you see like services like where people are like, well, we just offer like a posting and MLS service. And I'm just like, that was created be because of lazy agents. Yeah. And other people were like, wait, we can just do like that. Like all you're we'll going to do. Yeah. Here, yeah. give us 600 bucks and we'll just throw it in there for you. And then we won't do anything either. Right. So, so I talk our marketing plan. I talk huge through our marketing plan because for the most part, most agents will come in and most have no marketing plan. So you're going to lose to us because you're going to be like, well, what are you going to do? And they're going to, they, they have nothing, right? If they come in after us yeah. and they're like, well, I'm going to put an MLS. And like the, the bare minimum, right? That's what you're going to do, right? Every realtor is going to put in the yeah. Well, I'm going to have a professional photographer. Yeah, everyone should have a professional photographer, right? But what are you doing for marketing? So for us, I like to show people our IDX website and how every single marketing campaign we do, whether it be through Google AdWords, through social media, through classifieds pages, through everything that we do, forces back to our website. How it forces every client to register. I'll show them the metrics on some of our past listings. We had one just past week that had 55,000 hits on it within three days. It was shared about 160 times. Out of that 55,000 people that hit the website, or hit the post rather, maybe four or 5,000 will hit the link to the website. And then out of that, a couple hundred people will register. So we have their phone number, their email, their contact information, their name. Now we can reach out to them and say, hey, we see you were interested in this house on 123 Fig Street. We'd love to get some information to you. We're having an open house this weekend. Then what we'll show them the back end a lot of the time and show them, hey, this is ha what happens when someone registers at our website. This is what happens if we're asleep and the artificial intelligence will reach out to them. This is what happens if it's during business hours and the phone rings so that we can convert these people, right? This is what we do on our agent newsletters. This is who we send them to. This is the database we have. This is the relationship we have with other top teams in the area for sharing your listing, right? By the time you're done, you've gone so far and above almost every other agent that would come out there that it's almost a no-brainer for the per for the client to hire you. Now I'm not saying there's not maybe another set of you know top ten teams right in our area where if, if I go out and they were also on the listing appointment, like I'm giving credit where credit's due, right? Yeah. I'm like they're great, right? You know, yeah, we do a few hundred deals a year. They do a few hundred deals. Oh, they do six hundred deals a year. Oh, they do 150 deals a year. We're all great. You're not going to have a bad experience. But that's when it comes back to how did I build that relationship? How much right. wine did we drink? <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin's drinking a lot of wine. How <laughs> much wine do you drink? Well, you know, just in harmony with what you're saying is I've even gone a little bit further. And you've, some of our, you might have seen it and some of the agents might have seen it. So in our CRM, we've got lists. And mm. I've now created a new list that says, I think, I forgot what I wrote it, but like it was like demonstration lead. And it basically shows, it, it's just leads that I've put it in that shows so that when I go on a listing board, I can click these and like, all right, so here's a lead that came in within so many days. Look what, look what happened. Yeah. You know, it, it goes through the whole life. So this person saw your house, went to an agent. Look, the agent's called. Yep. Look how many times he's called. He's called six times. Look at the emails he sent. I was like, so it, it shows them that, you know, more than just posting and, and praying, my guys are running down. And I was like, we are looking at every person. We're trying to talk to every person who showed any of the remote interest in your house. If they click the link on your house, here are the actual people. And so it kind of gives you, ladies and gentlemen, this is something exciting just happened right now. Uh, the coffee just got delivered. And oh, we you're about the best. to go super mega. Ooh, thank it comes you. with a baby. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh man! So oh, I'm as so I said, happy. so we can able like look, look at, at the matching some of those though. Look at the matching outfits. Oh, yeah. they, the viewers can't see. Listeners definitely it's can't see. It's called fierce, but ladies and gentlemen. They're, they're looking super fierce they're right now. They're leoparded out. But yeah, so it kind of shows just a little bit of what we do. That's a little bit different. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Can I show this off without getting copyright issues on YouTube? Are they going to be? You're not in frame. Oh, nice. Very well, good. Well, this one is. Never mind. Mike, is that the same the pair as before? Eddie. I put it on the other side, yeah. Eddie, blur out the coffee company logo that no one's ever heard of. <laughs> um, yeah, so preparation is, is key. Mm. Marketing plan, it's good, right? It's so good. Marketing plan is key to make sure that we're, you're marketing well, that you're actually going to do something. Next thing, offer value. But this is going to be, we're going to go twofold. So I'm just going to outline a bunch of stuff. This is, I think this is kind of really the last thing, but it's probably the longest. 
So offer value, and this falls into advising on what they need to do, whether okay. it be staging, decluttering, deep cleaning, and then offering help where help is needed with vendors. So we think about carpet, we think about paint, we think about granite, we tile. think about tile, we think about all of these things. Lands hardscape. Hardscape, landscaping, all of these things that will come up when you go to list a house. Because let's face it, most people that live in their houses and have been there for a long time. Neglected it. I, you know, and it's not even neglect, they've just lived in it. Let's be real. If you walk through my house, I've been in there for nine years. If I was going to put it on the market tomorrow... There's stuff I have to do. I need to paint my shutters. I need to touch up paint on my porch. Like, there's just things yeah. that, that will come up. Power wash, whatever, right? So offering value through these vendors is crucial because as a new agent, you may not have built those relationships yet. But even experienced agents, I find, if they're not also flipping houses like we are and building, they may not have a lot of these connections. And what I've also found and golly day, I, I, I almost wish I could name names because it's like mortifying. Like, please don't call this person because <laughs> that, there's like realtors that I know by name where like I've talked to their clients or their clients have called me and said, well, such and such gave me one vendor for this. And I called them and the pricing was just double yeah. like what I could get. So it's like, man, like the value that you can add by actually having vendors that will help people and hook people up. Let's talk about that for a minute. Uh, I thought you were I'm like, all right, let's lay in on. I, I think one of the value, because so I've got a listing that's coming to the market. It was supposed to come February 2nd. So I don't know what day it is, but it was supposed to come relatively soon. And it's not we'll coming. And I, and, I, and I reached out to her and I was like, hey, so what's going on? Why why is this? And she was like, oh, well, the vendor that I got, you know, he couldn't come because his brother had to do this. And then it rained one day. And it was just like. Man, I was like, if you would have just gone with my guys, and granted, she had already heard her people set in place, but if you had gone with our guys, it's like, this thing would be done already. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this would be, you know, it would be painting. And she's like, she's well, she's like, I'm trying to do floors and painting. And I like, I went to the first initial consultation, and she was like, he said that we should try like just like these crazy colors. Oof. And I was just like, or <laughs> then I said, uh, I said, why don't we paint it just some neutral, you know, popular colors that we see? And she was just like, oh, well, won't it just look like all the other houses that are on the market? I'm like, yeah, yes, yeah, that's the point. That's I was like, you're not for. living anymore, so we're not trying to like speak to your artist, your artistic freedom and expression. Autistic. <laughs> you're autistic. <laughs> we're not trying to speak to your autistic. That's your autistic. <laughs> <laughs> Click. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's not what we're. That's not the reason why we're here. I was like, you want neutral. I was like, for a person like me who's on a team and we've had 170. 78 plus you know sales i see these colors and i'm like i also see what colors don't work i'm like don't be the house that doesn't work and i was like and so having just the knowledge and being able to leverage that on your behalf is the best because a lot of times i feel homeowners are looking online and they're like oh this will look great but some of these styles are regional and that they, and they don't really realize that i'm like oh yeah that's great but you don't see that here yeah i was like so if you put that here all the people coming in, they're going to be like, oh, I like it. I want my house to look like my friend's house and all these other houses. And I'm like, you've got to really pay close attention. So the one thing that I see a trend of, and this is um, also agents, the females and male agents. Oh, boy. Talk about country. It's, yeah. It's because they want me to highlight these certain things, the female-wise. And it's like has nothing to do with the listing whatsoever. They just okay. did all their time and effort of putting some mural or you know, like a drawing or something like that or whatever. And the male side is like, yeah, make sure you get the uh, the the uh, shed in the back because it's pretty brand new and stuff. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, ooh, both of those are wrong. <laughs> so as a new listing agent, yeah. like if you're brand new and you're listening to this, right? I mean, you have to figure deep clean is crucial. No one wants to be in a dirty house decluttering right stuff off of the countertop stuff out of the kitchen like everybody's got keurigs and kitchen aids and kitchen toaster aids. ovens and everything that stuff no one wants to see it get it out of the way right so all of that stuff is things that you're going to be doing staging find a couple good stagers that can give some good quotes so that if the house is empty and they want to stage or if you're dealing with investors then you can get them staged pre-sale so that everything looks just show ready but then when it comes into vendors and things like that I mean, you really got to build a list and you got to learn what stuff costs, you know? Yeah. And with COVID, stuff has gone up a lot. But I just find that, man, when new agents come into our team, it's one of the biggest things that they lack knowledge wise, right? It's like, well, I don't know how much windows are going to cost. I don't know how much roof's going to cost. I don't. And we flip houses so we can get a pretty good idea. We're putting stuff on all the time. But if you're a realtor, like, you should figure it out. 
you know, or talk to someone who does. Uh, and again, it's you need to nail down enough vendors that you can start to see what a good price is because it's mortifying some of the quotes that we get on some of this stuff that these realtors are, are trying to get done, you know? I see it often when we do, like, uh, home inspections, and they're like, what do you think this should cost? And they're like, oh, yeah, so that's uh, twelve grand." i am like, what? Yeah. I'm well, because like, <sighs> a lot of people, they just, like, they don't know, and then they just they just picked up the phone, called random Joe uh, contractor, and he was yep. like, yep, that's how much it costs. Yeah, he's a Class A, which is great, Class A. Yeah, that means he didn't do any work. He hired an electrician, he hired a plumber, and he hired a handyman and a carpenter. He sent all four of them and then took 20% and added it to the top, <laughs> right? So it's like, if you can get a direct electrician that works on his own company or a plumber that works for his own company, not some giant company that spends a million dollars on marketing their plumbing jobs a year right on television right Their hvac guys are on commission <laughs> it's that oh my god yeah michael and sons i mean i know they're not listening to this so forget you michael and sons i mean those guys are renting water heaters to people <laughs> renting water heaters like on lease like they've got to be like oh you're gonna do a payment plan on your hvac because we're gonna charge you fifteen thousand dollars a client called me this morning on the way here and said hey who's your hvac guy i just got quoted seventy six hundred dollars to replace a heat pump and this is the same guy that was doing it for like 4500 bucks three years ago. And so I said, well, I just got a quote for a house that me and you were buying that was like, I think, five. So I was like, all right, I'll, I'll send it to him. He'll save, you, everything. he'll save you $2,000. But think about that. Think about the value, right? You get realtors where the clients come in and they want to nitpick your commissions. 1%. I need 1% off of this, right? They're trying to knock three, four grand off. And you're going to be able to save them three, four, five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 in some instances on HVAC, on painting, on carpet. If you can add that value... Man, it's a home run. They're less likely to try to like ask you for like a reducing your commission if they if they sense your value. Yeah, and another thing we've started doing is pushing for like seven percent commission on stuff or more, right? Like you know, obviously commissions negotiable, yada yada yada. But you know, maybe pushing for an extra point, an extra point and a half, and telling them, hey, if you need carpet, if you need HVAC, if you need roofs, like. We'll put a contractor box on. We'll go to work for you. We'll get all of these trades hired. We'll get it invoiced. We'll get it paid for. If you want some of it to get pushed to closing to pay for it, we can do that. You want to go to an Airbnb for a weekend while we do showings? We'll do that for you. Where do you want to go? You want to go to the mountains? You want to go to the beach? You give us a little bump in commission so that we can actually afford to do that stuff. We'll go full-fledged. And at the end of the day, if you come in with a listing person and you meet with three agents and one agent tells you, this is the numbers, and when they're done, this person says, man, that guy is sure of his numbers. He's like, wow, these these dudes are awesome to hang out with. They just offered to renovate my house and contract this thing pretty much at no charge, and they want a little more commission than the last guy, but we're going to get to go away on a vacation for the weekend. They're going to do pro everything. Their marketing is top-notch. How are you going to lose? Yeah. And, and the answer is you don't. We don't lose listing appointments. If we go on the listing appointment, we probably have... I wish we actually had the stat because a lot of teams actually do keep their retention. But I would say we probably are 90% plus on what we actually yeah. pull. I can't think of any listings I've gone on in the last 12 months that I have not gotten where they've gone. With not in the last 12 months. I remember one we went on. Man, it was like two years ago. <laughs> like I was just like. Pretty, pretty good retention there, right? <laughs> I was like, that guy. <laughs> I was like, you know, what? Uh, this is totally, we're, we're way over time. But I just thought it was interesting that it's like, so he, us and the other agent quoted different numbers and he actually like listed it later and i could see like it was like a lower commission but it was with our inform with our numbers that oh, we yeah. i'm like so you just took the information we told you and she was probably like okay guess whatever you think i had one that hired you directly this was like five years ago six years ago i went in it was a nice house i gave her my whole plan she had this other girl come in i won't say like why i think they chose her over me but they did. They took your info. Wait, this person has your last name too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they took, I remember this yeah, one. Yeah, so they took they called Mike. She did they did the photos through Mike. She listed it. It was listed for sixty days. Didn't sell. And then the lady calls me. I sent Mike again to take the pictures. <laughs> and so he got paid twice and then I listed it and we sold it in like three days. That's too funny. Yeah. That was in uh, Ashland. Uh close. No, I didn't need new yeah. pictures. Yeah. It, I mean, I, because technically they own them. I don't think he. I can steal them. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, she owns yeah. the copyright right. once he sells them. Right. You know what I mean? So, right. 
Yeah, Man, if I'm like the uh, seller, I'm just like, wait, that's didn't the I, same Well, that's what I like. Well, she like, knows the same guy because she gave the other yeah. agent. She gave the agent his info. Which I've never heard that from that person ever again after that. Like, yeah. Well, she probably is not a realtor anymore. That's funny. Pro- well, so guys, on this you, is- <laughs> Buster. Let's look her up afterwards. So, guys, this is kind of what, the, if you have any questions, if you're if you're in your business and you're like, I would like to be, you know, a bigger, better, mega uh, listing agent, but I still have a couple more questions. Feel free uh, to mark it in the comments. Add something in the comments. Let us know what you want, and we were happy to reach out to you. Um, if anything you heard, you're like, that's total rubbish. That's not true. Please let us know in the comments. Tell us how you feel. We want to hear your comments. We really want to get your likes. Please subscribe. We are partnering with a lot of agents across the country right this second. Uh, we've got agents in multiple states in our network right now. We're trying to expand to more. It's been working out really good for referrals across the country. Uh, we've been getting together for masterminds on Zoom, really helping people build their business, giving them our playbook. So if you're interested in being a part of our network, please reach out to us. We would love to help you out in any way that we can. Uh, we are partnering with people all over the globe right this second. So you can reach me at jared at centralvarealty.com. You can also follow me on Instagram at underscore underscore the Davis Group. And you can find Galen at your realtor's favorite realtor, RVA, on Instagram. Or you can just find me on Facebook at Galen Parker Realtor RVA. TikTok? You want to throw TikToks out while you're at TikTok it? TikTok is uh, your realtor's favorite realtor, RVA, again on Ooh. TikTok. Yeah, get them on you TikTok. Want, you want to find me on YouTube? It's Galen Parker. <laughs> Parker, your favorite realtor's realtor, favorite, all of those it's things. All of it. YouTube. Anyways. Soon to become on Fiverr. Uh, Every, soon to be the, the right. Velvet Voice uh, on Fiverr. That's right. Again, this is an episode of Mega Real Estate Talk. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. If you have a real estate question that you would like to ask Jared or Galen, reach out to them at jared at centralvarealty.com or galen at centralvarealty.com. Who knows? It may even be featured on an upcoming episode. 